Hello everyone. It's me again. And uh, I uh, had to download Facebook on my tablet. I didn't like to do that. Um, I just established my account again. This is our home, barn, home in the KY Mountains, southeastern. We live on a uh, top mining, strip mine. But this is, has happened here about 40, 45 years ago. And as you can see, this was all bare. I've seen photos of the photos of this place. This, there wasn't a tree. It was all just bare. There was no grass, nothing when they were done. Uh, this is about 150 acres, so it goes from ridge to ridge. The only thing that was here was uh, this pond, which is man-made, and then this was all bare, all bare, bare. There wasn't a tree, nothing. This is 45 years later. Uh, we don't have much topsoil here, about an inch, but it takes hundreds of years to uh, uh, get good topsoil again in a place like that. So, so this is our <coughs> manure pile. I have it sectioned off in three three uh, areas where uh, this is the uh, this is the second year right now so this will be good dirt next year and then uh, we've got the uh, down there is the uh, the fresh pile which the chickens you can tell how flat it is the chickens they go right through it and <laughs> flatten it all out including the pigs and then here in the middle is our three-year pile which is ready and that's one of those things people say, so how do you know? I said, you smell, you smell the dirt. You can tell when it turns to dirt or if it's still manure, uh, fertilizer. So that's, that's our dirt right here. And it goes way down. We've been here long enough, it goes way down. And I don't use straw in our stalls. We use sawdust, which uh, we get for free at a, a lumber yard. And so this works out really good for us. Oh, well, what do you know? I threw a bunch of seeds out here the other day. Ah, look at that, you guys. <laughs> They're all coming up. And most of those, as far as I know, they are, uh, I love growing gourds. But I had a bunch of seeds. I knew they were kind of older. And so I don't keep, I just throw them out into the wild. But look at this. Huh? They're all coming up. And they're not being touched. Oh, there's something else. Oh, that's got to be some kind of a, squash here eh, eh. cool what i wanted to show today is um uh, first of all i just pulled one out uh we have to get our hay we don't have our own hay here so we get our hay from uh from friends in this net what is that on there well anyway this you don't know this but this comes up if you have animals and you, you buy hay you want to pull this this is called jimson weed it is toxic to all animals and sadly some of our younger generations humans uh, think that this is a great way to get intoxicated and then end up in the hospital so it's very toxic the pods that come up on it if you prick yourself on your thumb which I have get prepared to be high for about two hours anyway it's something that I have to pull out and have to check on uh, repeatedly every year make sure and this will take over so that's one that's jimson weed right there it gets uh, it gets real tall has flowers on it oh it looks real pretty and then it gets these uh, sticky pods on it and they have millions of seeds in them so something to be aware of if you just start up and have to get hay from the outside. That's the only one I found. So, chuck, pulled it out. Uh, I've been asked, I've mentioned Perilla in a comment before. They say, I'll show pictures, which was like, I can't do that. I'm not taking my laptop out there. So this is Perilla. It's an Asian import, okay? Uh, maybe some of you have heard of sesame leaves. I used to grow the sesame leaves in the city. Yeah, you should have seen my garden there. We had chickens, we had goats, we had, yeah, it was a little bit crazy, but the uh, families in the neighborhood loved it. They would come and, yeah, we had our own little petting zoo, and it was always busy at our house. 
So this is Perilla. It's in the mint family. It's got that uh, 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 square stem, and it's a, uh, oh, it is so, you can just take the leaves. Okay. Make sure there's no bugs on there. Mmm, you know, it's so fragrant. It's so good just to eat it like this. And uh, it grows here everywhere. It also is, I was told that, oh, this is very invasive as well. No, it isn't. It actually, it actually keeps itself well in check. I've had fields of them right down there by the pond next to our, uh, that used to be our piggy shed down there. And, uh, and now it's gone. There it's gone. It's still here. It comes up in different places. It's kind of self-controlled, so... No, it doesn't take over. The animals don't eat it. They shouldn't eat it. It's not. So it, it does have some uh, repercussions for them if they were to eat it. But for humans, it's perfectly safe. And it is the best, absolute best plant I've ever found for the immune system. You can put this in, in uh, you can make a tea. You can make a, a kind of kimchi out of it or just lay it in soy sauce and, and a little... Uh, uh, what's it called sesame oil and put some ginger and and garlic in it with it and it's delicious keeps for about two weeks in the fridge and then just you, you eat it as you go along or you just go and pick it out in the wild and you know just out here like this and eat it every day a little bit I made a tincture out of it uh, there are uh, sesame seed tinctures that you can make once they grow to to uh, maturity and then make a, a tincture out of that it comes really super strong and then uh, you can dry it for tea, you can put it in soups, stews, uh, chili, uh, stir fries, you know, whatever. It's really delicious, delicious stuff. And uh, look how healthy it is. It just looks so beautiful. So that's Perilla. And it's got a little bit, as it grows older, it has more of a purple stem. As you can see, the leaves are already turning purple right here. Ouch, it just bit me. And uh, so, so that's what I wanted to show here. Then, I can't remember. Oh, the wood nettle. We have very little stinging nettle here, but we have the wood nettle. And the wood nettle, just about, oh, good. This is the one I was going to show you as well. Is uh, the roots of wood nettle and stinging nettle are an amazing thing to make a tincture out of for a prostate problems or to prevent prostate problems you guys can all go and check that out yourself it's not that hard to find more info on that so again I make a tincture how do you make a tincture well you pull the root you wash it real good usually I just shake it out now you put it in alcohol it doesn't have to be sanitized you know it gets sanitized that way then you can get to you know sometimes people have liquor laying around at home they're going eh, hard liquor then I'm not using them not drinking that it's just fuzzle so I've used that and then, and then vodka or you know, what I prefer is moonshine. So then you let it sit, you put that in, you know, put the root in, fill it, fill it up, you know, make a small jar first, see how it works for you. And then uh, you let that sit for uh, about six weeks to two months in a uh, uh, sunny, sunny spot on a windowsill in a house. And there you go. It's run, and then you siphon it off. There you go. You got it. It's real easy to make. And this... This is called agrimony. We've not had this plant here growing for several years, and then suddenly it showed up. And I found it's going to get become, see, it's starting right there. See the leaves, how they, yep, that's pretty distinctive. But it becomes a real long stalk and has these tiny little yellow flowers on top. This is a really great plant to have on hand, dried, or you can make a tincture again. You can make a tincture just about out of anything except the uh, jewel weed, that won't work. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, it's great for throat ailments and stuff like that, for many things. And, but one is throat, and uh, I've given this to my daughter, uh, my granddaughter, when I thought that she may have gotten strep throat through another child, this and that, she never developed it, so there is that. Uh, okay, so there's yellow dock, everybody knows yellow dock. Yellow dock is a great, great uh, root. The root, I use the root. The young, young leaves, you can eat just a few. Don't eat too many. Let's see. Eh, I don't really, with my, 
if my leg's not working so good right now. It's uh, one reason we had to give up the goats. My legs started giving me trouble. So here's a really young leaf right there. I'll just take that. I'm gonna eat that. Mm -hmm. Not very good to eat, but it's really good for your insides. It's a, it's like a, a triple antibiotic on the inside. Hey, there is Tinkle. Hi, Tinkle. Say hi. It's one of our piggies. Hi. What you want? Huh? What you want? They're about. We have two of them. They're about five years old now. Doing great. Uh, they're Vietnamese pot belly ones, which is, they could be eaten, but they're so valuable for us with the job that they're doing. Every animal here has a job. They're so valuable that we don't need to, we're not planning to eat those girls unless huh, it becomes a survival thing. But yeah, they're very tame, they're very friendly, and uh, they like to go on walks with us, this and that. Anyway, but the root of yellow dock is it makes a great ointment for uh, any kind of skin problems to snap. Okay, so I think that's it. We'll go, oh, we'll go over to the house, show you one more thing. Uh, I love walking around, taking little videos. The two boys are two big dogs. I know, it's like, oh, all they got is that? No, we got a real old timer on the porch. He's uh, can't hear anymore. He's a little one too. Uh, he's got to watch him now because he gets he wants to still go out there. And uh, found him in the creek and down in the bushes. So have to be careful he doesn't get out, get lost. And the two big ones, Jake, Bo. Oh, here's Bo. Oh, here comes Jake. Those are our two protectors here. They, they literally go out and they run the perimeter twice a day. Sometimes they're gone for three or four hours and they keep everything. Bo is our older one. Jake, obviously, uh, is our younger one. He's still growing. It's difficult to get some weight on him. But these two, they take care of things. And they... Uh, Never taught per se, they just do their thing as not, it comes naturally to these two. And we've had people here that <laughs> it was funny to watch them, never seen this before. One of them stayed right outside the fence and circled the car, and the other one stayed right in here with me. I was all by myself. It was interesting to see how uh, they got right on into protective mode of me. So that was good. Anywho, so there's one more, and that's this one. The uh, best thing is to get it from someone that has it because it's very difficult to get it now in a store or a seed, and this is cup-free. I make an external uh, tincture for that with just rubbing alcohol, which means I just take the cut the leaves, put it in a jar, put uh, pour uh, rubbing alcohol over top, and let it sit again for a few weeks until I strain it off and use it as a topical um, antiseptic. It also pulls out, uh, oh, great, thanks, guys. Uh, pulls out uh, infections. I've used it on the goats, on their hooves, this net to pull infections out. This is what it looked, that's what I'll make, They're right there. Filled it up with the leaves, filled it up with rubbing alcohol, and there it is, sitting. Okay, you done? Now you took it out, hey? Okay. And uh, that's, what, that's what I do. But it's the best thing. For itching, also, ugh, takes the itch right out of anything. Oh, our hummingbirds. There you go. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. nice visiting. So, uh, so I suggest you get that plant. You, that's a domestic plant. That's not growing wild out there. But it's getting more and more difficult to get it, mainly because it works so well. I found that with other things as well. <laughs> Wow, that works really well, amazingly. And then suddenly it disappears from the market. Ah, interesting. Okay. That's what I wanted to share. There's a lot more out there. Maybe I'll make some more videos. I've done and worked with herbs and gathered this stuff for years and years and years and years now. Uh, mainly due to the fact that I'm allergic to just about anything over the counter. 
any prescription from the doctors. I can't take antibiotics, no painkillers, nothing. The only thing my system still tolerates is a little bit of aspirin. So, But I do pretty good, so I uh, found many different ways to take care of things. And uh, you live in a place like this, right? Make sure you got some for your dogs. If you live like this, uh, all of our dogs, except for Jake. Jake's never gotten bit yet by a copperhead. We don't have rattlesnakes. You have copperhead, you most likely won't have rattlesnakes or vice versa. And they all have gotten bit. And uh, the one thing to have on hand is uh, activated charcoal dust. Though I found just taking it out of the, if I didn't have any, just taking it out of our fireplace work too. So, and then feed it that, to them, and that collects the poison, and within a few hours, they're fine. Does it work on humans? I've, no human's ever been bit here, so I don't know, but I probably would use that too if I had to. Got to have some things at hand when you live this far out. You can't always make it uh, to the hospital. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to show. God's love and blessings always. Talk to you another time. And if you guys have questions, please ask. If I can't answer it, I will.